Sonic. Lab. TV. Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and I'm here with Sonic State to compare the various merits of the new Axiom Pro from M Audio and SL Mark II from Novation, both MIDI controllers with automatic mapping of the main DAWs. Now, you may have seen me on some of the movies on the Novation website and be thinking, hang on, doesn't he work for Novation? Well, the answer is no. I'm a freelance video and music producer who works for a number of manufacturers, including Novation. So this is going to be an honest overview of how each product works, with my opinions on the various strengths and weaknesses, so that you can decide which one best suits your musical needs. The models I've got to compare are the 49-key Axiom Pro and the 25-key SL Mark II. Both keyboards come in 25, 49 and 61 key formats, but this is just what I have. It's perhaps worth mentioning that the Axiom Pro 25 differs a little from the larger keyboard versions in that it has no sliders, numerical keypad or some of the function keys due to lack of space. The SL Mark II on the other hand has identical controls on all three models as well as coming in a slightly varied keyless model called the Zero. So let's start by looking at some of the hardware features. When I first got the Axiom I must say I was pretty pleased by its appearance. Perhaps it's just a novelty and a change from the other keyboards I own but I rather like the weight the rounded edges, the rubber ends, and the pretty spacious layout. Also, being a pianist, I still get excited when I see the piano-style keys. It's certainly not anything like as weighty as my beloved Korg stage piano, but it's maybe a little better than the previous M Audio keybeds I've played. And it has aftertouch. Other things I like are the drum pads. They're large, grouped into rows of four, and have a good feel to them. The display is nice and big, but only shows values of a row of controls, and not all the assignments. Pressing the edit and zone buttons together though does allow you to peek at the names of those parameters briefly. A lot of the LCD editing is done with the four soft keys below here, which are also often used to toggle the function of the eight encoders between several options. You've also got this numerical keypad, which sadly doesn't allow you to text your friends, as that would be awesome, but does make entering numbers onto the LCD quicker than stepping up and down with buttons. Even more usefully, you can use them to make keyboard shortcuts with a lot of software apps by loading up one of the factory preset onboard patches. More on that later. The thing I like the least here is the sliders. I prefer a flatter tip that the finger can rest on more comfortably, and the action is stiff and quite odd, especially when moved quickly. That said, there are nine of them, which means you can have a group of eight banking with a master fader on the end. On to the SL Mark II then. A much sleeker designed keyboard with blacks and silvers combined, and a slimmer, lighter unit overall. First thing you notice is just how many different assignable controls there are. 16 different rotaries, encoders and pots, and 8 sliders, all of which are touch sensitive, meaning you just need to touch them to see the current parameter assignments on the screen, or in Automap, select different areas of the software to control. There are also 32 buttons. And look at all the LEDs. There are loads of them, so it's easy to see the state of any control in an instant. If anything, the front panel's almost too crowded, which you only really notice when trying to access these buttons. But complaining about having too much on a controller is a bit stupid when the outcome is the ability to control even complex plugins without having to step through multiple pages. I mean, there's a lot available to assign. In addition to these two large groups here, you have two two-dimensional controls, including the touchpad. Like the Axiom, there's a nice big display. It's a bit of a shame the second screen from the original SL is gone, but I'm guessing that as you only really control one row at a time, it was considered more important to keep the cost down whilst adding all the LEDs and other new features. The SL's LCD is longer, so it's better suited to the layout of a row of controls on the front panel. Plus, both parameter names and values are shown simultaneously when a row is cooled up, and you can edit the options on screen using any of the controls below. The drum pads aren't as good as those on the Axiom as they're smaller and all in a row, but they are an improvement on the pads from the original SL at least. Keybed wise, the SL Mark II has gone for a keyboard style, but has a very similar weightiness to the Axiom, both of which are definitely better than others on the market. Both these keyboards have a system for automatically controlling software. The Axiom has HyperControl and the SL Automap. It almost seems unfair to be comparing these though, because Automap's been around for years and it's now on version 3, whereas HyperControl has only just appeared. The way HyperControl works is a two-way communication between the software and the keyboard directly, which is actually the way Automap used to work. 
and still does in one or two cases, but for the most part it now favours communication through Automap software which runs on your computer. The benefits of this are many, in that you have a graphical user interface allowing you display and editing of the way software is automapped. It also works universally, so that you can control plugins in any plugin host, with practically all of them working in the same way. In any software app, including Pro Tools, you can open up a plugin and have it appear straight away on the SL. The plugin mapping can easily be edited with the GUI, as well as using the dedicated buttons to activate really useful features, such as Learn Mode on the front panel. Furthermore, four group switches allow you to call up browser mode, where you can quickly select any plugin to control using the SL's touch sensitive rotaries. Getting started with HyperControl and Automap is really easy. Both systems have installers, HyperControl having individual ones for each DAW, and Automap one installer for all. Support wise, they both have videos online. Novation has a set of videos by this lovely man here, as well as a Pro Tools Automap movie with some bald guy. M-Audio has a couple of movies by an even bolder guy, but still help you to learn the main operational features and how to set up. Once installers had been run, setting up in all DAWs was easy. Both manufacturers supply written setup guides, with Novation's ones even being linked to from Automap's handy GUI startup page. M-Audio provides separate hypercontrol guides for each DAW, which makes it very clear how to set up and get going with each one. Now let's have a look at how the keyboards work with each of the DAWs. With the Axiom then, as soon as the session loads you get your mixer levels mapped to the sliders. You can bank up and down mixer tracks in groups of 8 using the bank up and down function keys. Meanwhile you can use the buttons below the sliders to select tracks, or by pressing the last button repeatedly while watching the name change on the LCD you can arm tracks, mute, or solo. The encoders control track panning, or by pressing soft key 3 repeatedly any of the send levels for each channel. If you would rather work with one channel at a time, then you can select channel on the LCD by pressing soft key 4 and then use the function keys to scroll through individual tracks. When one is selected, you can use the encoders to control pan left, then pan right, then the sends for that track on the remaining encoders. At the same time, the function buttons here can be used to mute and solo that track. As far as inserts go, you can use the encoders to select and control them. So to control the EQ on my percussion track, I just select that track, then press INS. Pressing INS repeatedly cycles through all active inserts. So I select EQ, then if I want, press and hold to open the plugin window on screen, which is nice. Then use the encoders along with the page up and down buttons to edit the insert parameters. For instruments, you can either use the same method as for normal inserts, or switch to instrument mode, which is actually almost exactly the same. In other words, you select the track the instrument is on, then use the page up and down buttons and eight encoders to scroll through and edit parameters. The only benefits of instrument mode are a dedicated button for opening and closing the window, and one to eight mode, where you can use soft keys one to four to quickly select the first eight pages of assignments. The system works well, but with only eight encoders to access and no buttons, it's obviously not ideal for more complex instruments and effects with many parameters. However, for any inserts in Pro Tools, you do have Learn Mode. So if you just want to control a few parameters, then you can activate Learn Mode in the plugin window, then move a control on the plugin, followed by an encoder on the hardware to assign. You also have the numerical keypad, which is pre-assigned to send keyboard shortcuts once you load the correct patch. In this case, patch 2 for a Mac. Then you can use the buttons to, for example, toggle the mixer window, and zoom in and out. With the SL, all you have to do once a session is loaded is press Mixer, which loads the Mixer Automap. The GUI shows you everything that's assigned and where it's assigned to. If I make this larger and change the transparency, you can see everything going on on both the keyboard and in the session underneath. So I have my track levels on the faders, whilst the last two drum pads bank up and down the mixer. Then I have mutes and solos on the buttons below. Note that the display of these parameters is very clear on the hardware too, with the LCDs and LEDs making it nice and obvious. Then over on the other side we've got track arming on the buttons up top. Then the encoders below are the same as those on the Axiom, whereby you can use them to control panning, or pan right, or the various sends, 
by pressing and rotating the speed dial. A nice thing about this mixer automap though is that, unlike the Axiom, nothing is fixed. Although the encoders should be left alone, everything else can be edited and reassigned as you want. So remove assignments by clicking on them and pressing delete, or drag controls from one place to another, or even use learn to reassign. Perhaps the greatest advantage with Automap is controlling inserts. Once you've selected the plugins to Automap, either automatically after installation, or by clicking on Plugin Manager in the GUI startup screen, and then activating any of them from the list, loading an insert makes it map instantly to the SL. Then I can edit it in the same way as with the mixer, as well as using the other options in the GUI to set functions like specific button actions or ranges, I can also change the name of the mapping, so that when I press the FX button on the front panel, I can see exactly which insert I want to load, and can select it either from the GUI or using the corresponding buttons on the SL. You can also do keystroke assignments with the SL, and although there are no assignments already done for you, it's really quick to figure out how to assign them. You just select the mapping you want the shortcuts on, like the mixer one for example, then select the control you want to use for the shortcut, then click and hold the keyboard icon, then press the computer keys you want to assign. You can even do a whole chain of assignments for more complex processes if you want. The way both controllers work with Logic and Cubase is pretty much identical to the way they work with Pro Tools. So I'm not going to show it all again with these DAWs. As a brief recap though, you have full access to all the mixer controls in mixer mode on the Axiom, while switching to instrument mode allows you to control any AUs, albeit with the somewhat limiting eight encoders. Also, the Axiom's learn mode for inserts and instruments is no longer available as it was in Pro Tools, so the system is completely fixed for these two DAWs. As Automap works the same way throughout, with the SL you still have access to all the cool features like learn mode and browser mode for either the mixer or any of your plugins. And all controls are available to assign freely throughout. However, there is one area that Automap doesn't cater for, and that's Logic's internal instruments and effects. The Axiom, on the other hand, caters for the internal effects pretty well, even allowing you to select and load them from the keyboard. For example, I just select a track, then use the encoders to first choose an insert slot, then select a particular effect, load it, then click Edit to adjust its parameters with the encoders and page up and down buttons. Similarly, with Cubase, you have exactly the same capabilities for inserts, as well as a good control over EQs. Again, just press the EQ's soft key, and then use the encoders to edit the selected EQ. The only way you can control these parameters with the SL, other than resorting to conventional MIDI, of course, is using the speed dial, a handy feature on the SL that enables you instant control over literally any parameter the mouse cursor is resting over. Novation do provide a workaround for controlling Cubase's internal effects. They are VSTs after all, so going to the online answer base or contacting tech support will iron that one out. But they won't work with Automap straight out the box. The handling of keyboard shortcuts is identical to the system with Pro Tools for both controllers too. So in summary, for Logic and Cubase, you need to figure out how important external plugin control is. If you want thorough control of your AUs and VSTs, then the SL still has a better system as the much larger amount of assignable controls, learn and browser modes, and the general flexibility make things a lot easier and quicker. If, however, controlling the internal instruments and effects is important to you, then it's more of a toss-up, and you need to consider the various pros and cons of each keyboard more closely. To stay up to date with HyperControl and Automap, you should keep checking both manufacturers' websites regularly, as both systems will no doubt be evolving on a constant basis. I hope you found this product comparison movie useful and now feel in a position to confidently decide which keyboard works best for you.